So Nine posted on Twitter that he wants to play Ultimate Frisbee at Riptide, and Seekint asked for a crash course, so this one's for you, King. Ultimate Frisbee is really similar to American football or rugby. The objective is to get the disc into an end zone at the far end of the field. The disc is put in play in one of a few ways, and then whoever's holding it is stuck like a basketball player without a dribble. They have to keep one foot planted, but they can move the other foot around and go from one side to another. They can pivot. And they have to figure out a way to pass it to an open player on their team to move it downfield. If the disc hits the ground without being caught, it's a turnover. The other team gets it from the spot it drops as soon as they can grab it and throw it again. The other team can also intercept it and then immediately begin a counter push. Unlike in football or rugby, it's a non-contact sport. Defenders can knock the disc to the ground if it's in the air, but they can't knock it out of the player's hand or try to restrain or tackle them. This leads us to the fundamental skills of playing the disc, because when you have it, you'll need to find a way to throw it to a teammate while someone's right in front of you trying to block you from doing so. Unlike in basketball, a frisbee is light enough and shaped for an easy enough grip that you can extend a lot further from your center of gravity and still get a reliable one-handed throw. So this is a common technique used to get around defenders. The backhand throw is the one pretty much everyone learns first, and that's how you'll throw to get around an opponent if you're extending in this direction. But the forehand throw is really important for getting the disc out in the other direction, and a lot of people don't learn that one when they're younger. So I figure I'll break that down so you can practice a little bit before Riptide. The grip for a forehand involves making a finger gun and then slotting it under the rim of the disc like this. One of the nice things about this grip is that with a little practice, it's easy to seamlessly switch your grip from forehand to backhand. And you'll be able to do that on the fly as you transition from one stance to the other. The most important aspect of any frisbee throw is getting a good spin. Arm strength plays a lower role in how far the frisbee will fly compared to ball sports, because if you spin it well enough, its flight will be stable and aerodynamic enough that a weaker throw will go further than a stronger throw with a worse spin. A lot of beginners will try to use their arms a lot and neglect getting the spin right, so they end up putting a lot of force on the disc in an imprecise way, which means the disc just won't go anywhere. Since the spin all comes from your wrist, I really recommend learning the forehand by first just holding your arm to completely immobilize it so you can only move your wrist, hand, and fingers. Something you might notice is that I'm letting the disc hang off my hand a bit in this direction instead of holding it straight. That's because in flicking my wrist, I'm going to end up rotating the disc in this direction just naturally. The way that the disc tilts in the air is the direction it's going to curve. If it's leaning this way, it's going to curve in that direction. And if it's leaning this way, it's going to curve in that direction. We want to learn to throw it straight until we have a reason that we want it to curve. So to compensate for that, instead of starting with the disc flat and ending up curving it once the wrist flick goes through, I'm going to start from a position where the disc is tilted away from me so that when I release it with the wrist flick, it's coming out of my hand level and it's going to fly straight. Once you're getting a really steady spin and a straight throw using just your wrist, now you can start trying to add more joints into the throw. Think about it just like throwing a baseball where every new joint that you add to the throw adds some extra power. A pitcher steps and their body rotates and their upper arm goes at the shoulder, and their forearm goes at the elbow, and then their wrists and fingers, each moving part of the throwing arm is going to add its own force on the ball, and it's going to be in a rhythm that accelerates exponentially fast one after the other. A forehand throw from a plant foot is going to start with the unplanted foot stepping out, since you're likely to be quickly transitioning from a backhand position to get your defender to miss, and then, if you have the luxury of being able to put some of your body into it, you can get some rotation by twisting your hips, some power from the upper arm, and then the direction and spin of the throw, and a little bit of power from your forearm and the wrist flick. If you have to go out to full extension to get around a defender, you might not be able to use quite as much power, but even just with the forearm and wrist, you should be able to get the disc pretty far with a good spin, and you can kind of use the movement out to give you a little bit of extra oomph as well. Random bit of trivia. Frisbee, note the spelling, is the brand name of a pie company. The original flying disc toy was just an upside down pie tin 
that happened to fly pretty well when it got thrown. A company that began manufacturing the first proper toy versions of it changed the spelling to Frisbee, as shown on screen, to avoid copyright infringement. We've come a long way since the pie tins, though. The discs that are used in competition are pretty precisely molded plastic and weigh exactly 175 grams so they all feel the same. 